I'm Susan Kessel with the Fairfield Art Association, and we're hosting this exhibit by Mike Carlson. This is an exhibit of uh, military dioramas, correct? That is correct. All right. So you've spent a long time making these. Mm -hmm. uh, you made them once before, and you had a house fire, and they all burned. Right. So these, these here, I'm thinking six years, in the past six years, six, that seven. That you've created all of these since that, that's correct. the fire. Yes. And you've, al you've always had a love of doing this. You're an artist. You studied art in school. Mm -hmm. um, have done a lot of drawings. Yes. How did you, why did you start making these? Well, uh, long story short, my dad and my one of my uncles was in World War II. Okay. And uh, I think that probably had the, made the, was the influence that, okay. you know, made me start doing this. I listened to their stories, you know, and they and had some just, good ones too. <laughs> I'm sure they did. And then you've wrote, read a lot of books, seen a lot of oh, movies, yeah. studied about what you've, um, what the dioramas are about, and you've recreated scenes within oh, yeah. each one. I've done a lot of reading, so they're all they're all reasonably accurate as far as the stories they tell. So tell us, how did you start this one? It feels like it has sand. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, I make the frame first out of this stuff, three quarter, and they're all made the same way, and then. I'll get uh, styrofoam, the pink stuff, mm -hmm. and I'll line the bottom with it. And if I want different elevations, it seems pretty easy to work with. You know, you just carve it and you can get a slope, a hill, whatever you want. So that's, uh, and then depending on what the diorama is about, there could be water, sand, dirt, more sand, you know. And you found all the the pieces of, um, what I want to say, greenery out in your yard, I assume? Most of it is uh, plastic stuff that okay. lo looks really real. Uh, some of it's real. Okay. But I have to, if, in doing that, I have to uh, usually spray it with a flat base, and that'll, that'll keep it alive. Okay. Not alive, but... From, Protect it from falling yeah, to pieces. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Where do you get your figures? Well, these came from an outfit called 21st Century Toys, uh, and I uh, had picked up a few of them prior to the fire. And uh, you can't, get, to my knowledge, you can't get them anymore. Uh, as far as I know, they're extremely detailed. This is 118th scale, where that is 16th scale. Okay. Okay. And uh, the, the the weapons and the tr every all of them are basically I found on eBay. You, you just don't find them. I haven't gotten any lately, so I can't so verify that, but. You still keep looking? Not really, not I don't have really. any more room. <laughs> <laughs> you need to add, make another yeah, room just Yeah, I'll just, just knock these. a wall out and we'll find <laughs> some more room. So the actual um, vehicles and everything you find online? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. All eBay right. usually. Okay, let's move over to another one. Mike, tell me about this piece. What is this called? A tank? Yeah, it's a it's called a Stuart tank. That's what they that's what it was named for whatever reason. And this is all we had, which is not a bit too major of a unit, let's say in the beginning of the war. It's a, it was a lightweight, smaller tank, which we uh, soon found out that didn't last long when the Germans were oh. around. Okay. And then we went to a heavier tank. It's very detailed. Yeah, um, it's not bad, yeah. They're, they're virtually impossible to find now, as far as I can tell. I haven't seen one on, on eBay for a while. Does it actually move on this track? Yeah, it's got a motor in it and everything. A motor? Yeah, you yeah, put a battery in it. And <laughs> so we could have it go across yeah, the floor? Yeah, it's remote controlled, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool. 
Mike, the other night you were telling me that this is a, a more special piece to you. Uh, well, they all are, of course, but because of the stories each one of them tells. But this one here is uh, typical of, uh, of what happens to uh, this, uh, the, the Tarawa and all the Pacific theater was extremely gruesome warfare, island hopping and stuff. And this is just a uh, Japanese had these bunkers and they were really hard to get them out of. Mm. So basically, this they literally had to use flamethrowers <clears throat> to get the, uh, you know, to, to kill them, okay. which is what you see here. And then uh, the, back down in here is uh, the Japanese officers, uh, as soon as the defeat was going to happen, they committed Harry Carey okay. with the knife. And that's what this guy's doing. So just looking at this piece, you can see a lot of activity that was going on and the history that was made. Oh my, yes, yeah, especially, and you got a couple Marines here. This, he's holding a flamethrower and it's just very typical of island warfare. Now I have to ask, this guy has a cigarette in his mouth. Did, oh. did you create the cigarette? Well, yeah. How did you do that? Well, I just took a little piece of wire and painted it white and put a little hole in his, and put a little ash on the end of it. Okay, very realistic. Now, you also <laughs> said you put some kind of, um, sprinkled some stuff on clothing to make it uh, <clears throat> change colors. Oh, yeah, uh, I use pastels. Pastels? Yeah, a lot of white and gray and brown and you know, the dust, I, and some of it is, uh, you know, you get the chalk, uh -huh. and then I scrape the, scrape the dust into, or the chalk into a pile, whatever okay. color I want, and then apply it with a large, larger artist brush on their faces, on their clothes, as you can see, because everything was really dirty. Yes, and is this actually dirt? That's real wood, yeah. Yeah, I just cut it. Okay, wood and... Uh, this is styrofoam, one inch uh, pink styrofoam, you know, the insulation mm -hmm. stuff. And then I put, uh, kind of can't remember some of this, but I mix up some uh, putty-like stuff and just paint over it with how a larger long, brush. How long does it take you to do oh, like this one? Oh, one like that one. would be, it's kind of hard because I... Stop you and know, start. Stop and start, but oh gosh, a I lot don't of know. hours. You could get uh, on this one actual time forty hours, maybe okay. on this one. Okay. You know, different periods, but about thirty to forty hours, probably. It's it's very artistically done. The way you have all the even the little logs. Yeah. laid around they're very yeah, artistically well, done so it's easy all you have to do is visualize a lot of this i just visualize there, there's not a photo necessarily okay but i i just you read the story and create yeah the i read the story and follow up with uh whatever or as knowledge i had in the first place and mm -hmm. from from reading you know or okay. observing okay mike this looks very real with all that foliage. And you said this was a recent one? Yeah, I just did this uh, within the past few months, uh, two months, three months. This is, I have a buddy of mine that I was in high school with that uh, uh, his name's Ron Townsend and he told me this story. He was in the Marines. And uh, anyway, it was 1967 and uh, he told me the story about how they were on a uh, patrol in the jungle, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden here come the Viet Cong. And his buddy, he was standing talking to the guy that he's got on his shoulder, and a bullet crazed his cheek, Ron's cheek, and hit this guy. Oh. And Ron then immediately, uh, they dropped their gear, 
because they knew they were in trouble. I'm, I'm narrowing this down, but he grabbed his buddy, threw him over his shoulder, and got him out of there, and the guy made it. Yay, that's a happy And they ending. had bullets flying everywhere when he was doing this. And uh, so in honor of, to him, he's been a buddy of mine for years, I, uh, I, I made that based on his story. So this is very personal. Oh, yeah. And local, historic, and um, This little figure even kind of looks like him, Susan. Okay. Actually. <laughs> I'm glad you told about that, because oh. I had looked at this, and I didn't, I didn't know that story. Okay, I was looking at the tag on this one, and it says Russia in June of 1941. Mm -hmm. Do you have several of, you've tried to feature different This is the wars. only one. This, this is, is the a... only one that involves uh, Russian troops. Okay. But they are all th authentic, the helmets, the uniforms, everything. I can't remember where I got them, but uh, so... that's when G Germany attacked Russia. Okay. So Which, the, when you order their clothing, do they come specified for different wars, or do you have to create that? Uh, no, I, I, I did that. You create it so it becomes the Russian yeah. uniform. Oh, yeah, yeah. All this is, this one is not real big on detail. Just, it's just a, a, a little tiny segment of, uh -huh. you know, the, the, and the Russians are surrendering. But uh, I don't even know if you can get the Russians anymore. Uh, but that's all. Or it's just kind of a simple one. Okay. Mike, this one is very interesting. You've created a room. Um, and tell me about this one. Well, this one's got Ernie Pyle in it, who uh, uh, was overseas, was, was over there. And uh, he, uh, he basically was... Uh, I mean, I'm not real tuned in but on this, but he he was about, he was the info, the special stories that came out during World War II that back to the U.S. Okay. I mean, he was the kind of the storyteller slash lifeline of what these guys were up against. And so, and this figure literally looks just like him, this figure right here. And I, the little typewriter and the whole ball of wax, and there, there you go. Uh, it, with the it's very lifelike, and uh, you, you get the picture of the whole scene. Yeah, he was, he was right up there where the action was. As you can see, the place has been shot up. Yeah, so. a few holes and burnt, and I assume you had some fun here creating this. <laughs> yeah. This one. Yeah, yeah. But I got it. I felt he should be honored. You know, he was <clears throat> he was the, the, literally the guy that I mean, obviously, there was much more than go, you know, mm -hmm. news back to the States. But he's the one everybody couldn't wait to hear from, so to speak, see what what was really happening. We're looking at uh, 1944. Yeah, that's correct. This is the. Uh, a Malmody Massacre, um, which uh, took place, uh, there, the, the, we, the, this was in, uh, I'm trying to remember here, oh, Malmody, and uh, we had, the Germans, this was during the Bulls, the Battle of the Bulls, and anyway, um, they massacred, our guys had surrendered, the Americans, that were there, that were there, and they uh, they had their arms up and everything. And the Germans uh, killed a total of 85 of them, just in a matter of minutes. And they called it the Malmody Massacre, which what this represents. And these are, of course, like the guys laying in the ditch. It was winter. With all the snow around. Yeah, and that's that's tells the story right there. You and know. you said you had someone that said they were familiar with this. <clears throat> um, actually, my dad was. Uh, 
I talked to another guy uh, that in the past couple days I met up here, but I can't remember his name. Or but he, his story was he'd been a he got there, uh, but my dad was delivering a uh, big crane to Malbody. Oh, and uh, he was in the uh, engineers, and they they got within about three or four miles of Malbody. All they were supposed to do was drop it off. Because you know we had the we had the town at that point, or mm -hmm. they everybody thought we did. So long story short, he, he came, they heard all this, they they knew something isn't right, and I mean he got out of there. They parked that big crane, and of course there was a follow-up vehicle to mm -hmm. pick the drivers up. They're delivering the crane and. Uh, they buzzed out of there as quick as they could get out of there, and they didn't. They didn't miss the Germans by far. He said that was the closest he'd came. <laughs> that sounds pretty like close. Kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, kind of gruesome, yeah. but um, you're yeah, looking this, at this the stories was, of war. There, there was a lot of upset uh, U.S. soldiers when they discovered this, and they did. They, they, they weren't too gentle with the Germans after they found this. Okay. okay, Mike, you just confided in me that if I might say so, this is <clears throat> one of my better works. Well, why? Um, just the capture of the uh, story it was trying to, to tell and that full, it, you know, it was just, it came out good, I thought, but basically this is about the Hurtgen Forest. Uh, September 44 to February 45, <clears throat> and this was a very large area, uh, and it's called the Hurtgen Forest. And in a nutshell, uh, I have read anyway that we had this huge forest fit, completely surrounded. It was full of Germans with bunkers and everything and we had them surrounded and we could have let them literally die on the vine mm -hmm. but instead somebody made the decision that we're going to attack from the front of the what call it the front of the forest and it was like a battering ram and we lost a lot of guys there were 30,000 troops killed in action or wounded, and all we had to do was not do that. We just surround them and wait a month or whatever, and they'd have given up. That's what I've read numerous times. So I, this is fairly recent, and uh, after I read the book, I thought I got to find, I got to make this. So that's what it is. So that's a story that uh, people know, but not a lot of people know, yeah, yeah, unless it, they've it, read the book. Or we, we didn't need to all. lose, at, or, or thirty thousand guys. That's that's, that's at least what I've read. That's a lot. Okay, Mike. This is one that I used a, a picture of this one for publicity because it looks so real. Mm -hmm. And is this a newer piece you've done? Oh, in the last, let's see here, it should be, it should, it should be a date on it. Oh my goodness, it's 2016 older, older than I thought it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well that's just basically, uh, uh, I might point out that these figures here, those four with the uniforms, uh, they're from a different company that I discovered three, three years ago or whatever. I don't know if they're in business anymore but they are extremely detailed. And then what I needed was one to look like Hitler. So I dug out one of my little figures from uh -huh. somewhere, put the hair on him, the mustache, found some uniforms, made up a uniform that matched what he wore. And all of a sudden I had a Hitler and I think it looked pretty close. I've heard a lot of comments, uh, viewers that really uh, yeah, did recognize. That one was just put together. But that in essence is what that was about. Just 
Uh, this is the other bad guy, this guy here. They were all, this guy here, I can't remember their names now, but uh, anyway, uh, that's what that's about, is just. I think this one planning kind of, for Planning for the invasion of the West. That's how it's titled. Uh, caught a lot of attention during your exhibit. People really like to look at this one. Okay. We're going to close after you tell us a little bit about this piece. Well, that is uh, uh, from the Korean War. And uh, it, it was uh, December 1950, uh, based on my research. But basically what it is is, uh, in a nutshell, initially we thought th that we were winning. And uh, then there was a, uh, a big surge of uh, bad guys, uh, Koreans, Chinese, whatever, that communist, and uh, we had to get the heck out of there real quick. And I mean hundreds and hundreds of our guys. This represents the retreat uh, from the, uh, uh, looks like Changjin Reservoir to Hungman Beachhead, which obviously is a beachhead. Our, our guys had to get to the beach to get out, to get them back out off of the, and that was, this was a retreat. And uh, I was kind of, uh, I didn't realize a lot about Korea. So I thought, well, heck, this thing, this thing needs to be shown with this little story. So that's what that was about, you know, just, there's a lot of guys in Korea, you know, that deserved, uh, deserve some, some notice. You've tried to touch on every war, and you've done a great job in recreating these scenes to tell us the, the history story about this. And Mike, I want to thank you so much for sharing this massive display with Fairfield and the community. Um, We've had a lot of people come and enjoy this, so thank you very much. Well, thank you, and uh, thank you to the Sondheim for sure. giving us a place to show it. Yeah. So cool. We're okay. good. <laughs> Thanks.